right, for today, we are talking about completing the square for hyperbolas. We've already seen how to do them for circles and for ellipses. The main thing that makes this difficult for completing the square with hyperbolas is that little negative sign. Sometimes you'll see it in front of the squared term, the x squared. Sometimes you'll see it in front of y squared. And depending on where it is, you may have to do a final last step at the end, and it kind of makes it a little tricky. So I'm going to go through and queue up our recording here. All right, first thing you can see is we got to group our x terms and our y terms together. Just like we did with circles, just like we did with ellipses, we have to do the same thing here for hyperbolas. Now, as you can see, we have that negative 89 here. We've got to move it over to the other side. So we're going to add it to the other side so that way it can cancel on the left. Now, at this point, we need to go through and we're going to find our center of our hyperbola. That means we've got to find the value of opposite of b over 2a for each one. And if you look, the first one next to the squared is always going to be your a. The one by plan old x is going to be your b. And so when we go through, the opposite of positive 18 is negative 18, and we multiply 2 times negative 9, we get negative 18 over negative 18, which we know reduces to 1. So that's our first part of our center of our hyperbola. So let's go through and we're going to repeat the process for our y set. So 16 is our a this time, 64 is our b. So opposite of a positive 64 is negative, and then 2 times 16, we know that to be 32. And when we go through and do our division, we end up with negative 2 as our second part of our center. So as we continue on, we got to go through and put this stuff into our equation. We always know we're going to have an x and a squared, a y and a squared, and we have to bring down the 89 down to the end. Now, to get the parts to go here, we take those centers we found, and we're going to change their sign, because we want the opposite. Opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. Now we got to figure out what to do with all these things in the front, because we don't have any signs there, no nothing. So, our coefficients, they're going to come down in front of the set of parentheses that it's talking about. Negative 9 was with x squared, so it goes in front of here. 16 was with, was with y squared, so it goes in front of the y terms. Now, at this point, we got to figure out, since we changed the left side, we got to go through and change the right, too. And it's a little tricky. We're going to take our number on the end, and we're going to write it on the right-hand side. And we're going to multiply it with the number that's in the parentheses right there, squared. Because essentially, we completed the square on the left-hand side. we got to do the same thing on the right. So we're going to do the same thing with the y's. So we got the 16. It's going to be squared times r2. And when we go through, negative 9 times the negative 1 squared gives us negative 9. And then our 2 squared times 16 should give us 64. Now we got to go through and add all those up. 89 minus 9 is 80, plus the 64 gives us the 144. Now we can't forget about all this stuff, so we're going to bring it all right on down and make it all sit on one nice pretty line. That way we don't get confused. Now at this point, in order for it to look like a hyperbola, we got to have a 1 on the end. Now if you think about it, the only way we can do that without really changing our equation is divide everything by that 144. So I'm going to divide the 144 by itself, I'm going to divide my term with the y's by 144, and my terms with the x's by 144. And let's go through and let's do some reducing. So we know this part over here is going to give us 1. Now as we go through the other parts, we have the negative 9 over 144. We're going to leave the negative alone for now, and we know 9 goes into 144 16 times. With the other part, we know 16 goes into 144. Oops, I shouldn't have wrote that 9. Give me a second. Should be a 1 with the 9 on the bottom. So now that we have that, let me rewrite what we have because it's a little messy right now. So right now we have negative of x minus 1 squared over 16 plus y plus 2 squared over 9 equal to 1. Now, if you look at these signs, this does not look like a hyperbola. I've got these signs mixed up. i got to switch them. Because the signs go with the terms, I have to switch the whole term here with the whole term here. And when I do, it should look like this. Our y plus 2 squared over 9 is going to go in the front with its plus sign in the front. Then my x minus 1 squared over 16 gets put behind it with the minus sign right there, equal to 1. Now that I have it like this, I can go through and graph my hyperbola.